Hi, today another video about the ESP32 and today's topic is the combination of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the example I use is with the help of some Nordic friends. I call them Alice, Mary, Louis, Dolly, Bob, Dave, Marta and Jim. But this is only an example and you can use any other mobile object and keep the same principle. Principle. In summary, this is some kind of beacon tracking software with a Wi-Fi connection and so the whole data is stored in the cloud. So let's have a look at the principle. We first set up our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stack. Then we do a gap scanning for advertising packages from the beacons. And if we identify a beacon, we can measure the transmit power at a special range. So maybe at one meter, that's the point that most of the tracking software use. And if we know the power at one meter then we can calculate with the actual power the distance between the beacon and our main station, the beacon tracker. And then after we collect all the beacon data, we can send them via HTTPS maybe to the cloud and store them in a cloud service. And then after the sending, I send the ESP32 to deep sleep for a certain amount, maybe 30 seconds. And after the wake up, the whole process is start again and again and again. So here we see the system in action. On the right upper side you see the debug window with all the ESP32 output and on the website you see all the collected beacon data sent to ThinkSpeak and you see the distance of some of the chips like Mary, Louis, Dolly, Alice, Bob and so on. And if the distance is zero the chip is not in the reach of the ESP32 beacons tracker. So after a while, after data collecting, we have a whole movement profile for every our beacons. And if the beacon is out of reach, we maybe can also integrate in some kind of alarm so that we are informed if the beacon is in reach or leave the sensor measurement field but this demo is just a proof of concept so there's a lot of ways to improve this see this just as a building block for maybe a part of your project and not as a full solution you can take out of the box so let's have a look at the source code, just a glimpse look. This is the main routine and this is the main entry point. And we just initialize the non-votile storage, then the, we initialize the Wi-Fi in stationary mode. Then we start the Bluetooth controller and the Bluetooth stack initialize it and enable it. Then we set the BlueFi security. Then we register our gap event handler. This, that's this point where we find the tracking code. Then we also register our BlueFi callbacks. There we start our gap tracking. And then we also initialize the BlueFi profile. So first let's have a look at the BlueFi callbacks. Let's start the event callbacks. This is this routine. And one of the first points if the event init finish is called, then we also start our scanning for beacon advertising packages. And all the rest are just the same as from the Espressive BlueFi example. So let's have a look at the gap init. The gap init just initialize some kind of beacon tracking structure where we collect our beacon data and I just do some setup for some known beacons. But you can use also unknown beacons and track also them and their position and so on. And then 
this is the point where the scanning is started and we just scan in a time duration of 10 seconds. Then after the scanning has started, the gap event handler is called and we just collect all the beacon data in the scan result event. So we look if the beacon is known and it is in beacon and starts with the beacon sequence. And if so, we add the beacon data to our beacon structure. And after the scanning is completed, then we just prepare our HTTPS request with the collected beacon data. This is this field. And then we just start a task to send our HTTPS request. Request. After this, we go to, to the HTTPS request. But this example is just the known example for the HTTPS request to connect to the SyncSpeak server and just send our collected beacon data to our SyncSpeak account and the SyncSpeak channel we create. So after this, we close the connection and just do a little countdown for 10 seconds and then we just just start the deep sleep mode for 30 seconds. So let's continue by building our firmware for the ESP32. I just do a clean and then build everything from the scratch. So you see there's no other software components involved, but this maybe take a little time. So now we are linking our firmware and we are finished in one minute and one second. So let's prepare the ESP32 for flashing and then we flash. And I use the higher flashing baud rate as you see. So it's a little bit faster. Okay, we are finished in 15 seconds and that's all. So my Bluetooth low energy beacons just detect in a range of about 10 meters. So that's very low range. But to improve this, we can introduce maybe another tracking point or we can also add on maybe some kind of GPS module to our ESP32 and do just maybe some kind of triangulation to our beacons but that is some kind we can do in the future. And the use of this kind of GPS module is very simple. You just hook on the UART converter to the GPS module and just track the text output. And you see there's a whole lot of tracking data from the GPS module. As always, all the source code you can find in the GitHub page. The link is in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something and if so, please give me a thumbs up to support my work and as always, thanks for watching and bye bye.